Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Twenty-five. So we have been discussing about the torque-free rigid body dynamics. We will continue with that, uh, and thereafter we will go into the stability uh, of the rigid body dynamics under torque-free condition. So uh, what we have done last time that uh, we had the rigid body. Uh, obviously, for the last week we have been doing the same thing. this may be a disc this may be a cylinder whatever it is and uh, we assume that this is the direction of the angular momentum so because it's a torque free condition torque free condition so this implies dh by dt this will be zero and this implies h is a constant and that is what we are writing as h zero and let us assume that it's a acting along this direction which we are fixing as e3 direction the e3 which is the inertial inertial frame direction Okay, and then uh, obviously we will have the e3 is here, then e1 and e2 will look like this, which we are not drawing here. And let us say that we have this is the body axis e1, and this is body axis e2, and along this direction we have the body axis e3. Somewhere here we are showing this is the angular velocity vector. Okay, so this h zero can be written as h zero magnitude times unit vector along this direction. Which we have shown here as e3. So this e3 cap is the unit vector along this direction. But we need to work it out. What will be that value? So let us say this angle is theta, which is the Newton angle. And therefore, the e3 cap. This can be described in terms of a small e3 cap cos theta this is here along this direction we will have e3 cap e1 cap along this direction e2 cap along this direction so e3 cap is along this direction so it's a component along this axis that will be e3 cap cos theta and plus now from this place it's not visible but uh, we'll have to draw another figure we will have another vector here and that time sin theta will appear so this vector we need to fill here so let us go back into the situation from where we start uh, here along this direction you have the psi dot psi dot is here okay and then we rotate this frame so this is your e1 e2 and e3 and once we rotate this Okay, so this point will go to this point. E two prime. This will come to E one prime. 
this angle is psi and thereafter we are rotating about this axis by theta. So, this will rotate and uh, go to the position here this will rotate by theta and this will also rotate by theta. So, this is in a circle which I am not showing here. This is your E 3 and E 3 prime is along the same direction and E 3 double prime here E 2 double prime and E 1 double prime and thereafter we are giving one more rotation which is by phi here. So, this is coming to E 1 triple prime E 2 triple prime this angle is phi and here E 3 triple prime this is your E 3 along this direction itself. this angle is phi. Okay. So, what we can observe that this line and this line they lie in the same plane. Okay. This pink line and this pink line they are in the same plane. So, here the unit vector along this direction will be E 2 cap double prime unit vector along this direction times sin theta and we have to get this quantity E 2 double prime which is the unit vector along this direction. So, this one we have referred to E 2 cap this one we have written as E 3 cap and this one we have written as E 1 cap. So, taking this So, here along this direction what will be the unit vector we have to take component of E 2 along this E 2 double prime and uh, component of say uh, this and this they are perpendicular to each other. So, we need to take the component of those vectors only. So, we will have this is E 2 cap cos phi and from this place this will be this E 1 cap sin phi and once we insert into this. So, this gets reduced to E 3 cap cos theta plus sin theta times E 2 cap cos phi plus E 1 cap sin phi. Expand it. So, E 1 we will put it in the front sin theta times sin phi E 1 cap plus sin theta times cos phi E 2 cap plus E 3 cap cos theta. And therefore, if you write H 0 as H 1 times E 1 cap because this is a symmetric symmetrical case S 2 times E 2 cap and S 3 times E 3 cap. So, this implies this quantity will be equal to H 0 times cos theta times E 3 cap. So, therefore, from here what we get H 1 equal to I 1 times omega 1 this quantity is H 0 times sin theta sin phi and this implies omega 1 equal to H 0 sin phi divided by I 1 which we have written as here I 1 equal to I 2 equal to I 
and I 3 we are writing as I 0. So, this is the assumption of the symmetric rigid body we have taken. Similarly, the S 2 equal to I 2 times omega 2 it can be written as from this place H 0 sin theta times cos phi and this implies omega 2 this equal to H 0 sin theta cos phi divided by I 2 and S 3 in the same way this is I 3 times omega 3 cos theta and this implies omega 3 equal to H 0 cos theta divided by I 3. So, these are the equation we are having 2 and 3. So, you can see that the omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 we can also express in terms of H 0 and Euler angles. Okay, and earlier we have done purely in terms of the Euler angles. Okay. So, advantage of doing this you will uh, as we proceed. So, you will come to know Okay, now what our intention is that uh, here aim is to get the Euler's dynamical equation for torque free case in terms of in terms of Euler angles. This is our objective. Okay, so we need to put uh, this one, two, three in the Euler's dynamical equation uh, under the assumption that the torque is not there, and then solve it. So, we have the first equation I 1 times omega 1 is the dot minus I 2 minus I 3 times omega 2 omega 3 this equal to 0 okay. and here omega 1 if we insert it. So, this is H 0 sin theta times sin phi divided by I 1 minus I 2 minus I 3 times omega 2 omega 3 as we have written H 0 sin theta sin theta times cos phi divided by I 2 and the other one is H 0 cos theta divided by I 3 this equal to 0. So, this this cancels out from this place okay, and here we have uh, I 1 d by d t we need to differentiate this quantity. Equation number 4 similarly we will have I 2 times omega 2 dot I 1 times omega 3 omega 1 this equal to 0 
now we insert the omega 2 dot here so omega 2 dot is h 0 omega 2 will be h 0 sin theta times cos phi i 2 minus i 3 minus i 1 and omega 3 you see h 0 cos theta divided by i 3 times omega 1 is this one h 0 this equal to 0. So, this is our equation number 5 in the same way i 3 times omega 3 dot this equal to 0 and this implies picking up omega 2 from this place cos phi this is equation number 6. Now, as we know that i 2 equal to y 1. So, this quantity is 0. Okay. So, therefore, this term vanishes and what we get from this place h 0 cos theta this equal to a constant this implies cos theta will be a constant and from here theta is a constant. So, this we directly get from the equation number 5 from equation number 6. Because this quantity turns out to be 0 i 2 is equal to i 1 here i 2 this equal to y 1 equal to y. Next we use this equation equation number 5 and uh, solve it. So, the equation number 5 we have i 2 times this i 2 i 2 will cancel out because it is a constant quantity and what we get from here is 0 is a constant because it is a torque free condition h is a constant. From here we have got that this a theta is a constant therefore, h 0 sin theta can be taken outside the bracket i 2 i 2 cancels out and what we get from this place is just cos phi we have to differentiate this. So, that becomes to cos phi differentiation is sin phi with minus sin times phi dot. This is from equation 5. Okay. Thereafter i 3 minus i 1. So, this we can write as i 0 minus i 3 we are writing as i 0 plus uh, this is minus minus i 3 minus i 1 times is 0 cos theta by i 3 is 0 
cos theta divided by i 3 and h 0 sin theta sin phi divided by i 1 h 0 sin theta sin phi divided by i 1 and this quantity is equal to 0. Now, okay, one more thing uh, that we have left out here this h 0 sin theta we have taken it outside the bracket only this part we have differentiated. So, this part we are missing and we should insert here. So, we will put here h 0 sin theta minus sin here. Okay. Now, if theta is not equal to 0 and phi not equal to 0. So, under that condition we can divide both side by dividing both sides by sin theta sin phi. So, what we get from here by h 0 also will be eliminated. So, we will have here phi dot plus i 3 minus i 1 h 0 gets eliminated and here we get as h 0 ok. Uh, so, this is uh, equation number 5 7 This one cut term as 8 and uh, cos theta is missing. So, we put here cos theta also is 0 cos theta this quantity. Now, uh, further we go uh, and look for that earlier we have used this equation omega 3 equal to phi dot plus psi dot cos theta. So, if we utilize this equation we get some more thing from this place. So, this quantity can be written as omega 3 if we go back and look here omega 3 is somewhere omega 3 equal to h 0 cos theta by i 3 h 0 cos theta divided by i 3. You can utilize this equation here and if you look from this place. So, psi dot this will be equal to h 0 cos theta divided by i 3 minus phi dot divided by cos theta. Remember that theta is a constant here. Okay, so, this gets reduced to h 0 by i 3 minus phi dot by cos theta. So, your psi dot equal to Now, uh, we can work on this further because the phi dot already we have uh, estimated phi dot if we go back and look here in this place um, phi dot is here phi dot to, we have derived here in this place. So, we can insert this. So, from this place what we see that so, from this equation implies that psi dot equal to h 0 divided by i 3 or we can write here on the upper side from equation 10. From phi dot by cos theta from this place will be minus. So, that 
this will come with a minus sign. So, that becomes plus i 3 minus i 1. I three I one okay. times H zero. So H zero by I three plus here I three I three will cancel out if we break the bracket. H zero by I one minus H 0 I 1 I 1 cancels out by I 3 and these two get eliminated and the psi dot then becomes H 0 by I 1. And because H 0 is a constant this is a constant and therefore, this turns out to be a constant. So, what we have recovered from this place that psi dot this is a constant theta this is a constant and phi dot is a related to this equation where h 0 is a constant cos theta is a constant and therefore, phi dot also is a constant. So, theta is a constant here and phi dot this is a constant and this implies that theta dot equal to 0. Now, uh, phi dot and psi dot it can be simplified. So, phi dot we have written as phi dot from this place we can pick up from this place phi dot equal to on the right hand side we can write as i 1 minus i 3 divided by i 1 i 3 and then h 0 cos theta. So, we know that h 0 by i 1 h 0 by i 1 here this quantity is psi dot. Okay. So, we can write here i 1 minus i 3 divided by i 3 and h 0 by i 1 is psi dot. So, this becomes psi dot cos theta and then psi dot can be expressed in terms of all these quantities. So, from here this implies psi dot this equal to i 3 by i 1 minus i 3 times phi dot by cos theta. So, see that uh, this equation we derived in some other way also, but using this formulation how smoothly we have been able to work out the whole thing. Okay. And uh, you can do it yourself in the way like writing it as phi dot divided by i 1 divided by or uh, minus sign we can take it outside here in this place. So, this will become 1 minus i 1 by i 3 cos theta this is psi dot and psi dot magnitude then you can write as minus phi dot magnitude divided by i 3 magnitude times cos theta magnitude. And already we have discussed few things about the retrograde rotation, which is the case when I 3 is greater than I 1, which this we have written like this earlier. Okay. So, if that happens to be the case, 
Okay. So, this quantity is going to be less than 1, this quantity is less than 1, okay. both are less than 1. So, you can see that the numerator becomes here denominator uh, becomes less than 1. So, 1 by something like uh, let us say this you write this as minus phi dot divided by k, where k is less than 1, okay, but greater than 0. So, if we take it upside, phi dot and 1 by k, then we can write this as say if, uh, if we write as something like alpha. Okay. So, obviously from this place it is a visible that alpha is a quantity where alpha is greater than 1. Okay. So, this simply implies that psi dot magnitude will be greater than minus phi dot magnitude. From this equation we can get this. It is a very simple to see if uh, just check it yourself because alpha is uh, greater than 1. Okay. And uh, rest other things also you can uh, work out in the same way for the see utilize this figure this phi dot and here in this direction this is your psi dot for prograde rotation this is your uh, omega this is the situation here this angle is gamma and this angle is theta this is for prograde okay. and for the retrograde case it turns out that phi dot will be not in this direction, but rather in the opposite direction and psi dot will be here in this direction this is the phi dot. Okay. So, if you have been indicating this as the theta angle here in this case your omega will go along this direction. And uh, using the uh, this figure then you can derive many relationships like uh, along this direction omega component you will have omega 3. this is omega 3, you know, this part will be omega t and obviously, this is omega. So, you can get all sorts of relationship you can derive. So, I need not do all those parts here. Okay. Some of the things will appear as the part of the tutorial problems. Okay, so, if, uh, you can uh, take it and find out the relationship as a homework find the relation between theta and gamma we are remember that gamma is the angle between the omega 3 and the omega vector while theta is the angle between the psi dot and the phi dot vector Okay, so, whatever we have done through the geometry the same thing we have just derived using the basic formulations for, for the torque free case in, in terms of uh, the angular momentum. So, we stop this lecture here and we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you very much.